the third part of our video. Now, uh, earlier, uh, Andy gave you an overview, and now he's gonna show you how to turn on machine for the first time. Andy is uh, in charge of the RO uh, division, and he knows exactly how this machine needs to be run. Uh, Andy, it's all yours. Yeah, um, once the machine is uh, connected with the water connections and uh, the uh, tank connections and the power supply, then at the first startup, there's going to be air inside the machine, and we need to bleed that air. It's best to start with the switches off and start with the feed system. You can hear the pump is starting to pressurize the feed, and it's going to displace the air that came into the system during transport. You see the pressure start to come up. We have five pressure gauges through the feed treatment system, the pre-filtration system, and each one is a different level. And so the difference in pressure gauges shows you the pressure drop across each of the pre-filtration stages we talked about earlier. As the pressure comes up, then we're pushing out all the air and you will hear that the um, pump will stop automatically by itself once the pressure, once the pressure is all up. And it's what, almost there. And what does the pressure up meaning? Got, get, get rid of all the air? It's got rid of all the air and it's fully charged. You see, we've set the pressure switch at about 80 PSI. And this um, isolates the pre-treatment system from the RO system. The pre-treatment system now is fully charged. So I'm going to turn on the RO pump and I'm going to start the machine with the power switch. And there's a little delay as the valves open before the pump starts. And now you hear the pump start. You see at first running a high flow in this drain flow meter. And you can see the very bottom gauge is the RO pressure. By controlling this valve, we can raise the RO pressure and as we raise the RO pressure, you can see the drain flow starts to drop and the product flow starts to increase. I'm going to turn this pressure up to about 200 PSI. At 200 PSI, with this test water, we have a drain flow of about 16 liters a minute and a product flow of about 16 liters a minute. That means that the recovery of the RO right now is about 50-50. For every liter going in, half a liter goes to product and half a liter goes to drain. Depending on the nature of your well water, you're going to be able to adjust this somewhere between 50% and 70% recovery. The lower the recovery, the lower pressure the upper unit can run, the lower stress on the membranes, but you have to balance that out with the efficiency you need and to uh, get the water you need. How do you do 70? This one's now 17, yes. And how do you do a 70 uh, and 30, for well, example? Well, you have two adjustment valves. And as you increase the pressure here, you increase the pressure and you get more flow. You also have the ability to lower the pressure by opening the recycle valve. And you can adjust these as necessary to get a low operating pressure and get the water you need. For instance, if I turn this up some more, now you can see we have a drain flow of about 10 liters a minute and a product flow of about 15 liters a minute. Uh, I think that's uh, dividing into my head about a, a two thirds, no, it's a 60% recovery now. Uh, we have um, three products for every two drains. You can set it up further. One guide to use is to work on the idea the machine is designed for 6,600 gallons per day. If you divide that into gallons a minute, it's about three or 3.2 gallons a minute. So one thing to do is to lower the pressure until we get that 3.2 gallons a minute, and then you know the membranes are operating at the point they're designed for. And this lowers the pressures required. Um, it's lowering it below what would be realistic for a well, just based on our test water. 
What is the best way, what is the best measurements to have for to have 50-50? Well, 50-50 is conservative, and as a starting point, that would be my recommendation. And how to do you set these to get 50-50 at the lowest pressure as possible? And how do you get it back to 50-50 in case the customer wants to put it back again? Um, I can get it back to 50-50 by closing this valve, opening this one a bit. And what the customer need to observe in the gauges? Well, I'm setting the gauges so the two gauges are identical, which means we have exactly 50-50 recovery. And you can see with this water, 50-50 recovery at close to 6,600 gallons a day is obtained by 140 PSI. Now these numbers, it's important to make a record at the first startup because Later on, when the numbers are different, you're going to want to compare to the original startup when everything was brand new to identify where the issues are. This is a very important troubleshooting guy. And how often we need to change the, uh, the media within each vessel? Okay, first of all, each of these three vessels have automatic valves that regenerates the green sand, regenerates the softer resin, and backwashes the carbon filter. These can be set to do the uh, sequence every day or every second day or twice a week depending how dirty the water is. And in most situations the media itself will last for a long time. Now it's going to depend on the nature of the well water, how high the contaminants are, and how many um, hours a year the system works. But in an extreme situation, it may be necessary to change the media once a year, or in other situations, uh, the media might be fine for three or four years. Eventually, the media will have to be renewed. Perfect. Thank you. And, and the best way to have this machine run is by have uh, the well water go in a tank first, and have it fit to the, uh, to the machine, and have another tank in which the product line goes in, correct? Correct. It's best to go from tank to tank. And then the customer, all what he has to do is to leave this machine on 24 hours a day. That's it. Yes. We supply this machine with a high-level switch that is um, connected into the product water tank. You can connect it from above on a plastic pipe so that you can um, adjust the height. This machine is running because the water level is low. As the water level comes up, it closes the switch and then it, after a little time delay, you'll see that the unit stops. Now, the unit stops now. The product flow is now zero. But you can see the flushing light came on. When the tank is full, this means you have all the water you need, but the machine continues to run for five minutes, which flushes the salt and the scalants out of the membrane. And this automatically happens at every tank full shutdown. And what does this mean here? Do if in case the, uh, the red light comes on here, what does that mean? PF on the computer here stands for pressure fault. And what this means is there's um, insufficient feed pressure, which may happen, for instance, I think I could make it happen if I inadvertently turn this off. Now the pressure's coming down, when the pressure gets too low, you can see uh, after a time delay, the pressure fault light lights. This is a safety in case this pump is accidentally turned off, or in case the tank is dry, or in case the well pump stops. This is just a safety to protect the machine in those conditions. And how do we dry. bring it up right now? So we, we, we notice it's off, so we turn it well, on again? Yes. And, and it'll just start to run again. And you notice that the pressure is going back in and the machine is recovering itself. Yes, but it's not making water now because I've kept this full switch full. And if I let this off, after the time delay, it's going to go back to making water. And we have to wait until the pressure is equalized on all the tanks, those three tanks, and then the machine will restart by itself 
by moving this pressure back to what it was before. 